So let's get started with an array implementation. And here we use an array implementation with the fixed size. So that means when we create a stack, we, we say the stack can, for example, maximum host 100 elements. So here is the stack visualized, and this is our array with, in this case, six elements. And what we need to remember is we need to remember an index, where we, which is the top of the stack, where we have to add our new elements. And when we remove an element, we would remove the newest element closest to our index. So we would basically pop off this element here, and when we would push an element, we would put it, push it here. We will use here a void star to allow storing us any type of information. And as a user, you would be responsible to manage the memory. You could use malloc3 or you could create a fixed array. So our array allows us to store all, all elements at the end of the structure without the need for any additional pointers. So let's have a look at the implementation. Here we see our data structure in terms of the abstract data type implementation how it would look like. And here we see the structure in terms of the C definition. So we create here a stack element T, which is of type void star. And I just typed def it because I find this more convenient than operating with void stars all the time. And now here we, in our stack T, we have a capacity, which is the maximum number of elements. And we have the index, which means at which element are we currently inserting or removing something from the stack. Exactly this basically pointer here. And lastly, we create an, our array of stack elements, which remember was a void star pointer. So we have an array of void star pointers, which is the collection of the elements. And this is kind of a trick because putting this notation at the end allows us to remove one indirection of a pointer. How this works, have a look at the data structure here in memory. So in memory, we have two elements. We have capacity and index. Right, like here in the struct. And then if we have a collection with three elements, for example, they would be directly part of this stack object. And you would find this collection pointer basically is pointing directly to the first element because it's just an array. So we don't need to store an additional array um, of pointers, right? So we we'll see. We see the difference in a, a minute. We recall from our C lecture about pointers. Um, you remember that an array is similar to the implementation of pointers, but the difference is that the compiler remembers the location. And if I would have used here a collection star, I would have somehow here to store externally an, an array of our pointers to the stack elements. Well, here I, it's all embedded in the structure. So how do we initialize the stack? Well, we create a new function. We call it stack underscore init with a capacity. What it needs to do, it needs to allocate um, the data structure, which is of type stack t. And then we have for each element in its capacity, we have to store one of these void star pointers. OK, and um, what we do here, we, we basically create this element and we say the index is zero at the beginning because we haven't stored anything. And we, we point collection points to this first element after our index. Okay, so we can store arbitrary number of elements, how whatever number was given to stack in it. So now here we have our operations pop and push. And I use the function assert to check that the code is used properly. So what this function assert does is that it provides a check. And if the check is false, it will basically exit the code and print an error message. So it's used to, useful to enforce that the API is used properly. So what we want to do here in the stack push function, we, we have to put in a stack, of course, and then we put want to store an element. Now what we do in our check is we check that the index of the stack is less than the capacity. Otherwise, we would go out of bounds of it. And that would be a, an error, as we know. So that's why we I put here the assert. And the assert here says, well, I, I know 
that S index must be smaller than S capacity. And if it's not, then it's a mistake by the programmer. Okay, so what we then do, we add at the position in of the index, the element, and then we increment the index. So basically we append our new element at the end. When we do a pop operation, we, we do another check here. We check if the index is null. We cannot pop something from an empty stack. Then we return null. Basically there is no further element on the stack. And otherwise we decrement the index and then return the element at the current position. So here's now an example how we may use the stack. So we create a stack with 100 elements. That's how it looks like. We have a capacity of 100. And now we push on the stack. This is a test. So this is how it then looks like. Our array had its position 0. This then S is a on the test lastly. So now what I can do, I can say while true, run a loop. I pop something from the stack, removing the last element. In this case, the last element is test. And if I don't get a new element, I break this loop. Otherwise, I print um, the string that is pointed to by this pointer. So think a moment about it. What kind of output I will get from this function. Pause the video, of course. We can use the stack to store anything. Here in this example, we use numbers. And again, we initialize 100, um, a stack with 100 elements. We create a pointer to a 32-bit integer. We allocate memory for this pointer and we store value 4. We want to store value 4. So we have to push on the stack the value, this pointer that points to our integer of value 4. Here indicated with the little arrow. And then we allocate another 32-bit variable, store 4711, and we push it again to the stack. So on the stack, we have now 4711, so a pointer to it. And then when we pop a value, we have to cast it to the representative type. We know it's a 32 integer pointer and then we have to dereference it and that's how we basically got our 4711 back and now we free the number.